Okay, so good afternoon. I'm Luigi De Russis. I'm the second teacher of this uh, ambient intelligence course. Please. Uh, I'm the second teacher of this ambient intelligence course. The third teacher, you will meet the third teacher in uh, two weeks. Uh, for now, I will follow with you the, this uh, wonderful hour in the Thursday afternoon. Uh, and today we'll speak about Python. We'll start speaking about Python and we'll continue speaking about Python next week. Uh, the idea here is to give you a very brief introduction to Python, to the Python programming language. And I will try to make this lecture less as less uh, uh, as um, not so much boring, uh, even if it's not particularly easy. So I will ask you some question during this hour, and uh, you are free to answer or not. Hopefully, some of you will answer something. There is no right or wrong uh, answer. Uh, these slides are on the teaching port, uh, no, on the, on the website, on the course website. We will use these uh, for this lecture and next Thursday. Uh, I will not follow, I will not show you these slides for this lecture. I will logically follow the same structure, the same topics, but I will not follow the slides just to try not to make these uh, boring, hopefully. Uh, but we can try to do something a little bit more interactive, especially given the hour in which we are. So I will start with two questions for you and possibly answer by raising your hand. How many of you already know anything about Python? Okay, so maybe for you today will be a little bit boring, but please... Uh, Forgive me. And the second question is, how many of you know anything, nothing about programming in general? Never see a programming language, never know programming. Nobody? Good. It's a good starting point for sure. So let's start from not this, but this. Okay, so uh, some brief information about Python. By Python is a quite recent, I would say, programming language. Was uh, appeared for the first time in 1991 and was designed by this person that was also working in Google after his creation. That is called something like Guido Van Rossum, not Guido like in Italian. Python is a general purpose and high level language. So it's, it can be used for several different applications in several different contexts. And it was designed with an emphasis on code readability and conciseness. So it was designed not to be very long, but to be quick to read, easy to read, easy to follow. As a programming language in general, it obviously has a website and it has different version. Right now, there are two current version of Python. The, w the first one is the legacy version that is Python 2. And then there is a, let's say, more contemporary version that is Python 3. And we are using Python 3. Hmm? I'm saying this because Python 3 is not totally compatible with Python 2. So if you are looking on Google or in some books or whatever about programming, about Python, and if you look something, if you find something about Python 2, so maybe it's better to look for another source of information because that information could not work exactly in that way hmm, for Python 3. So on the teaching, uh, on the website, you, you can find a set of slides that I also shared on uh, Slack yester yesterday evening. 
uh, about how to install Python on your computer if you uh, have some problem. So first of all, download from here the Python. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And also to install the PyCharm that, that will be the um, editor, uh, the integrated development environment that we will use mainly during this course. So I would start from this. Just to uh, remind you bad or good uh, uh, things of the past, probably. So what is this? Yeah, this is single language, but in particular, what is doing this? This is something that computer scientists, computer engineering love a lot. That is the Hello World program that is the minimum program you have to write in a given programming language to print on screen a given sentence that is hello world. So this is the minimum that you can write in C, programming language, for printing this sentence here. So this is not an, an interview about C, but just a few questions for you. What does the first line mean? To include the, which library? The standard input output library that it's useful for basically everything that needs input and output from your computer. <coughs> then, second line, it's empty. Third line, what is this int main? Is a function. function. And it's not a function only, it's the yeah, it's the main function. <laughs> that means that... It's the first one called during the execution of the Yeah, program. It's, if it's present, it's called during the execution of the program. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have in C the main function, you basically don't, doesn't execute anything. And this line, printf, I told you before, print on screen, hello comma word and then this uh, return zero to say okay everything is fine and stop so these one two three four five six line program without the space is for printing hello world in c it's not particularly different in other programming language like java for example and this is the python equivalent so can what can you notice that there is a lot of le less text uh, is obvious, but it's just one line, okay? And what is missing? The semicolon are missing. In Python, you don't have semicolon, never. No standard input output library. They are already included since it's the very bare minimum library, the standard input output library that is how to print something on the screen and how to get something from the keyboard. It's something really essential. Then, what is missing also? The main function. There is no main function, as in C, for example, in Python. There is something similar to the main function, but it's not a function. It's another way of saying this is the, what we want to execute as a first execution of the program, but it's not the main function. And, uh, okay, there is no main function and there is no parentheses. Hmm? These are not present in, uh, in Python. Hmm? And also there is no, in this case, return because we don't have a function here. So, I will leave the slide here and let's try to discover something about Python by doing something in PyCharm so that you can also see the, the programming environment that we are uh, using during the course. I, was, I said before that 
uh, I will follow logically the content of the slides, but not displaying the slides here. So let me create a new project. And I call something like um, basics. So notice when you, I would say also for uh, people that is not here, or if you need to uh, see again this uh, lecture that is video recorded, notice here when you create a program, you create a, right now a pure Python program, it's called in that way, you give the location of the program, a folder, and then if you open this menu here, this element here, you see two bullet point. The first one creates a virtual environment and put everything inside, but for now, just select existing interpreter and look here or in this menu or here for the installed version of Python, if any, in your computer. So then you can create everything. This open PyCharm <coughs> here in that sidebar, you have a folder, you can create a new Python file that I will call start, for example. And here you have a white space in which you can write basically whatever, whatever you want, but in particular, probably Python code. So let's try to uh, execute the hello world as before, just to check that everything is set up correctly. So print hello world. Then I go on the start.py file and with right click, I say run start. That is the start program here. You can see that it printed awfully hello world. So it works. Let's start in this way. So here you can see two things at least. The first one is that to print something on screen, there is a function that is called print. Not printf, not print whatever you want, just print. And the second uh, things in that sentences, strings are, can be written with uh, double quote double quote before hello and double quote after word and obviously as i said before you can also see that you don't need a semicolon at the end of the instruction if you want you can add a comment with the hash symbol and write i don't know this is uh, the hello world. Hmm? This is an inline comment, single line comment. Hmm? If you go, if you create a new line, you are not using a comment anymore. You should add another symbol and again. There is a multi line comment if you want that is represented by a triple. double quote or a triple single quote as you prefer this is a multi-line comment here you can write another line and another line and so on and all this is just comment so it will be just for you not used by python to effectively run your program i will just delete all this and leave this is the hello world with a space. So you can also notice that when I run this program, it just starts from the first line and run everything inside, no main function. It just starts from the first line and run everything from the first line to the end. Uh, there are some uh, keyword in Python that you cannot uh, use in your program, like for example, uh, and, or uh, while or 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 if uh, a list of keywords that are proper of the programming language and that is they are all reported in slides 
then how to create a variable to store something in Python. So let's remain in the sentence word. So I would like to create a variable that store the Python string. So I just create a variable and say Python as a string. So if you uh, are used uh, to C or Java, this is not typed. You don't see integer, you don't see int, you don't see floating point, you don't see anything, just the name of the variable. And if the variable is compound by multiple words, you just use the underscore to separate several words of the same variable. Not the minus signs, not capital letter, just the underscore. Uh, so this is a variable, and this is a string that contains Python, like hello world as before. And if you want, uh, obviously, to use uh, other, we can say that this is another string. It's another variable that contains a string. This is uh, another variable introduced on 991. And uh, this is another variable. So four variable, three of them contain, that contains three different types of element. The first two contain strings. The third one contains a number. And the, the last one contains a Boolean value, true or false. Notice that a string could be uh, introduced by a double quote or a single quote. It's the same. The recommendation in Python is uh, choose one of them and use it constantly. So doesn't, don't mix single and double quote in your program just to avoid to have a code less clean or not conci concise enough. Just, I like the double quote, good, use it. You like the single quote, very good. Stick with it, don't mix things up. Uh, obviously, I can also do something like this. I can reuse the same variable that before contained a string and put inside a number. Or, A floating point number. So uh, since the Python is not typed, strongly typed, uh, you can put inside a variable that you already defined, that you already used, whatever you want, basically. Is the Python interpreter that run when you run the program that try to understand what this is? Is a floating point number, is an integer number, is a string, is a boolean, and if needed, perform dif differently. So if you try to, I don't know, for example, uh, imagine to have a function to capitalize a word and you apply this to Python, yes, not that, ver that Python like this, it works, it will put Python, for example, for the first capital letter, and if you apply the same method to the last version here, the last variable version, obviously it gives you an error because you cannot put capital letter in a number. So it's the Python interpreter that try to understand what is included in a variable, what type is in a variable, and behave differently according to the value. If you want, you can obviously check the type of a variable with the type function. If you give in the type function a variable, like language name, and put print, before, and run this. So let's do this for all the variables here, mostly.
you see that well it prints all the words because it's from before you see the first one is a string str the second one is an integer int and the third one is a boolean as expected so this is the same let's say mechanism that the python interpreter use when to understand what is present in a variable I also should have a nice example of this that I don't remember. Okay, zero. So uh, zero or oh, one, two, three, four. And let's print another. And so. I created this variable that's called another and uh, in this way that is a zero uh, o letter and one two three four just a couple of numbers and what happens in your opinion when we print the type of that variable what is that variable <coughs> guess a number uh, a string a uh, boolean uh, i don't know it's an octal number, it's an octal number. yeah if we print but yes it's an octal number it's an integer because it's a number and the o stand for octal in that case if we print this it prints like 668 668 that is the representation of that in octal from octal. So this is just a particular case. Probably nobody of you will never use that, at least not in this course. But it's something that you can do in uh, in Python if you want. So as I said before, uh, let's combine this. You can have. Uh, a string like uh, this and another string like this so what happens here I told you that obviously there is an error I told you the string can uh, be included in double quote or single quote. Here, what happens? There is a conflict. There is one single quote uh, in addition. We have one to three single quotes. So for Python, the string is here, and this is, it doesn't know an error. And probably here should start another string, but we don't have. So how we can solve this, this error? Yeah. So easy method. How we can solve this without that suggestion? Easier method. We can use we can use double quotes <laughs> and this is the first thing that we can do because in that case there is no ambiguity and everything works the more let's say complex the more elaborate is to add an escape charter to say dear python this is not the end of a string this is just a single quote in the text so please 
remove the error and consider that as a quote in the text. And if we print that, this is just string, we just see I'm a string, I'm a string too, without any error in that case. Uh, in Python, we can also have string that spans multiple lines. So uh, a very long uh, string starts as, as, as a comment with a triple double quote or a triple single quote and you can write whatever you want this is the first line new line this is the second and this is the third and you create a string that span multiple line and that has new lines inside if you need it and you can also do this with triple single quote if you want they are as before exchangeable just choose one of them and stick with that um, so this is basics really really basic of python variables uh, python has uh, the other programming language obviously various control um, structure uh, so let's start with the if so let's start with this example we have uh, people a variable at 20 and cat at 30 that contains 30 and we say if people are less than cats maybe cats then print too many cats we are doomed so let's notice two things three things some things the first one is that the if structure as the keyword if obviously you cannot use if as a variable name because it's a reserved word and then the condition in the if is just written there without parentheses without anything just there first element equal minor greater than second element then you have what is that? Okay, then you have that. And you go new line, and what happens here? What happens before the print? What is this? Oh. It's a mm, yes, a tab. It's indentation. There is some space in the if. This is so notice that we don't use the bracket square here, like in other programming language, but Python instead of bracket square use indentation. So Inside if, inside for loops, inside function, you will have new line indentation. And if you have something more indented, is something that you have at a inner level in the function or in the, in the statement. So here we can say if, uh, I don't know. And then other indentation and so on and if you need to quit to end for example the if statement you just remove the indentation and continue to write
So, okay, again, the if statement, no parentheses, no, no uh, normal parentheses, no brackets parentheses in the end, just a new line and uh, an indentation like other things in Python to include, to put together all the elements. And if you need to go out the if statement, just remove the indentation and write. Python is very strict on this. Since this is the way of working of Python, the indentation are really, really important because it gives you the control, the, flux, the control flux of the entire program. And uh, PyCharm uh, put, uh, if you print the tab, put four spaces before the print or before the first instruction inside a function or inside an if statement. That is the default in Python. This is the recommended value of four spaces, not three, not five, four. Um, so, and if we want another if, if people greater than cats print we are safe, no, not too many people, but we are safe because too many people, because too many people. So this is a, an if statement, this is an if statement and uh, they are executed like in other programming language. This first line is uh, interpreted, the if people less than cats, then if this condition is true, if the condition people less than cats, it prints on screen too many cats, we are doomed. Then it executes this second statement and if people, it evaluates this condition, if people greater than cats, it print, we are safe. If we want to collapse a little bit things and not to have two separate line 25, line 28, two separate uh, evaluation of the same condition because obviously if people are less than cats uh, it's difficult that people could be also greater than cats if it's true the first one the second one is false and vice versa so we can use the else if statement that in Python is called elif that stands for else if but just more combat way elif and then uh, you have also, if you want, the else keyword and let's say, for example, we can't decide because they have the same number of people and cats over there. Mm -hmm. so everything is more or less clear up to here. I interpreted this as a yes. Um, indentation, must be four spaces. indentation is recommended to be four spaces. Would be enough for the interpreter. Uh, PyCharm, if you press tab automatically, put four spaces for you because it's the best practice. Let's call this in this way. Can you, can you show again how you run uh, the program? Oh, yes. And it's just print that well, a little word from before, and then uh, too many cats because we have 30 cats and just 20 uh, people. And, and then prints we are outside the if statement because we removed the indentation. And so we got in the, ma in the normal control execution of the program. Uh, Python has, in addition to uh, less than, greater than, also the equal. People, is people equal to cats? And uh, the, that works with, let's see this here. Probably it's better. That works with numbers. 
So the first line, what will print? False, is two equal to one? No, okay. Uh, the second line, true. Notice that we use the, in Python, we can use the same double equal symbol to compare numbers or string. We don't have any distinction here, just the same. So is string with one um, quote equal to string with double quote? Yes, they are string. We don't really care. We have the not keyword. Print not false will print true. We have the and also and the or if you want to create more complex and this could be just printed or used as uh, in the if statement uh, as a condition of an if statement so if two equal equal one and true then do something in the if statement else do something else and so on uh, right so let's speak a little bit about strings now so let me open a new file i will put this file uh, on github and a link on the course website so you can also download this stuff here and see it again at home if you want let me call it strings and let's start from scratch so let's speak about string and characters and uh, uh, whatever to do this i will introduce a new that you already know a control statement it is the for loop so the for loop is differently from the other programming language that you may or may not know is written in this way for something char is a variable in so let's put this a little bit sorry for char where char is a variable in something else it should be a set of elements let's call it in this way then operate typically on the variable that in this case is char in Python, you don't have the C equivalent of the, the exact format. You can have the same result, but you don't have the for e equals zero, e minor than 10, e plus plus. You don't have that format. You just have this format for something in something else. You can recreate that behavior, but you have to write the for in this way. There is only this way of writing the for in Python for something where something is a variable in something else where something else is a set of elements let's call it let's call it in this way so if we run this what we expect it to to have what we are expected to have you don't read you don't read this this screen but i will increase the zoom after your answer okay let's do it in another way uh, you are expecting to have this h new line e new line e, l new line or not for character in hello print character you are expected to have a charter for line or not? Okay, who say no? Okay, and who say yes? Okay, and who say no? Now you have to answer <laughs> why <laughs> you are not expecting this. 
no particular reason. Okay, uh, in any case, this is the right way of, um, of, of working of Python. Mm -hmm. So you, the idea here is you have a string that contains a law. So the same things is this uh, word equal, equal hello and for char in word. So this is equivalent as before. We didn't change anything. We just put hello inside a variable and then we use the variable in the for loop. Nothing changed. Hmm? So this is equivalent. But let me go back to the previous version. So what happens, what happens here? For real, the, the Python interpreter, what does here? Okay, <laughs> not not really, but yeah, we can. So no, no more more in an abstract way. More in abstract. Way. The for loop. What what would does the for loops? Yeah, multiple time up to an end. Let's say. So what happens here is we have let's say five letters. Don't call it. Let's not call it array for now, but just five letters. So for each character in this set of five letters, print character. So we get first run the H is put inside char. So char equal H and Python print H. Then it does anything else? No. So it comes back here. And say the H already printed the H, so let's move to the E. Not in this way. Let's move to the E. Okay, so E is put inside char and then print char that contains E. There is anything to do here in this white space? No, it's a white space. So again, there is another letter. Yes, there is the L. So the char is set to L and print L print the other L, print the O, and then there is no more letters in the string, and so it stops printing and quit the program. So here you print H, because print, print the variable and create a new line, then it prints the he, the L, the L, and the O, and then the program stops. It's a basic for, just written in a different way. Uh, we can also without using the for, uh, as, as was saying before, create a variable and put it hello and say print, uh, say hello of one. So what happens in your opinion if I run this, just these two lines here? So, which letter will be printed? E. The E, okay. Let's check, just to... Yes, I, there is the, the, the for loop before, but yes, it prints the E, okay? Because one is the second element in that uh, list, let's call it list for now. So the E. And uh, a little bit more difficult. Which type is this? If I print the type of this E, what is this E? A number, a string, a boolean, a character? An elephant, what, what is? Who say a number? Good. Who say a boolean? 
Very good. Who say a string? Who say a charter? Okay, I will not about, ask about the elephant, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, a string. So, good answer, string people. No problem, char people, because in Python you don't have charter. You just have strings. It's just a string of one element. It happens. So, this was a tricky question. It is a string of one element, just the E. But in Python you don't have charter. There is no concept of charter. There are numbers, that are boolean, that are strings, there are other type of elements, no charter at all. Um, you can also, while when playing with string, uh, put together, you, we have seen that we can compare string with a double equal symbol, but you can also um, combine string together. So for example, we can have a language that is equal to Python and version that is equal to 3. Dot, oops. 3.7 and we can say that the Python version is language plus version do you want to combine two strings? just sum it up language plus version and it will print a Python version Python 3.7 just put together two strings without space because there is no space in any of the two strings so just put together this and you can also do very useful things like language multiply tree and what are expecting to what do you expect to to do this print python 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 yeah without space because there is no space in this original string okay and uh, what happens if i do this language plus three where three is not a string obviously it got me an error sure and the error is uh, can only concatenate string, uh, not integer, with string. So you can say uh, 2 plus 3, where both are number. You can say a string plus another string. You can say a string multiply a number, but not a string plus a number. And if you want to have this concatenate, you can, well, either transform it in a string in this way but maybe it's not always possible or use a function that is called str str takes an element in this case a number but you can also have other elements and try to convert it in a string so python is able to convert a number an integer number a floating point number into a string is able to convert other types of elements into a string, is able to convert a string into a string, uh, and this way you can concatenate elements. And also, if you imagine to have uh, something like, uh, you can also have this. It tried to convert the string version into an integer if obviously version is a number of some types that could be converted in an integer so if number if version for example is just this it can for sure convert version in a number and put it inside the variable that I called the variable 
So you can also convert elements, different elements among string, um, among different types with this int for converting something in integer and str to convert something into string. Uh, you can also, let me put this in the previous version, version, and you can also um, build more complex string, especially in the print um, uh, function. So we can say that a is equal to three and b is equal to five, and we can say print a times b is is a multiply b what this print to you a is 3 b are 5 they are both number and i would like to print uh, 3 times uh, 5 is uh, 15. So this is another way of combining uh, strings. They also can be numbers. And uh, you see here that it just printed three space times space five spaces, even if we have no space in the function print. It's this specific way of writing the print uh, elements that put uh, a space where there is an, uh, a comma. Mm -hmm. But this works only in print. You cannot say variable equal a comma times comma. It doesn't work. You have to say variable equal str of a plus uh, times plus str of b because they are numbers and so on. If you want to put it in a variable mm -hmm. otherwise it will give you uh, an error there is another way of other two ways of doing this i will show you in the slides because it's taking too long uh, that is this that is similar to what you probably see in uh, uh, the C programming language. You have uh, a variable that contains a string and you have percent %d in a string times percent %d is percent %d. And then you have a space, a percent, an open parenthesis and three element. A that is three, B that is five and A per B that is 15. This is the operation. What is does this is to take the first of this, the first specifier, that is this, and put at that place the content of A, the second specifier, the content of B, and the third place, the content of the result of this operation. And as I say, these are called specifier, and these are the specifier for numbers, you can also have specifier for strings, just in case you have to put here some string and not some number. And you can also have specifier for the raw representation, that is how Python see for real this, that in this case is a number, and in case for a string is just the string with a single comma, sorry, a single apostrophe, a single quote uh, before and after the string. And this instead is called a tuple without a percent, this structure here, a parenthesis, an element, comma, an element, comma, uh, an element, and you can also continue up to whatever you want. It's all this structure that is represented as a collection of elements separated by comma in parenthesis is called a tuple. It is a lightweight structure in Python. And there is also a new way of uh, printing the same element, the same things as before, 
that instead of using a specifier, you use this couple of bracket square here, here, and here, and then you say dot format, and you put A, B, and the A per B, and these perform the same operation, put the content of A in the first position, the content of B in the second position, and the content of A per B in the third position. And you can also have, yes, this is the new way, and you can also have more complex things, if you like, with this uh, pen. So you can also write here one, write here zero, more or less, and what right here too. If you put some number here, you're saying, okay, I don't want to put the first element, the second element, and the third element that I find here. I just want to put here the second element that I find. Here, I would like to put the first element, and here, I would like to put the third element. And you can also put the third element in the first place and the second element in the last place as you want. So this one is the index in this parentheses, so 0, 0, 1, and 2. Element number 1, element number 0, and element number 2. This is a new way in Python to uh, interpolate, to, com to build a complex string. Let's... It's equivalent to use... No, it's equivalent to use the number of string specifier. The row specifier basically, uh, let me see if I can do this, more or less. Um, the row specifier give you, ah uh, yes, in this case, anything yes I know um, yes maybe one sec let me print this because otherwise we will not see anything. The row specifier prints like before, but given that these are strings, they pu it puts a single quote to say this is the row representation of a string is a single quote, uh, the string, another single quote, so it prints this in this way. If we put here the S for string, you see that it just doesn't have anything. It's just the string, this one string. And the same thing with the Yeah, with number. No, for curly braces, you don't have specifier, so you just put a number or strings or whatever. And it prints this version here, yeah. Not the raw representation. Um, yes. Um, so let's imagine to have the same uh, here, this thing here, but we make an error and we say, for example, that say hello is Helco, and I would like to fix that error in this way of uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Is fine for you or not? What happens if I run this? Everything is okay or? I have a string that is, I would like to be hello and I just write helco and I would like to fix in this way. We know that if we print say hello of three, I will print the fourth element in the string, but in this case, it will fix the let's say error or not who say yes nobody who say no 
Okay, and the other are not available. Um, the answer is no. It says string object doesn't support item assignment. That is a complex way to say that string cannot be changed in that way. String are immutable. Once you define a string, you cannot change that a single element in that string because you don't have charter, you're just string. So you can either say, yes, this, or if you cannot, you can say just say hello is equal to hello. So redefine the content of the string. You cannot change something inside a string with a string for real. Mm -hmm. Then there are many other uh, mm, operation of strings that we will not cover in these slides, but uh, there is something that is called uh, the internet that uh, could help you. In particular, there is uh, the Python tree documentation that as whatever you want and if you look for maybe not here um, here somewhere here you can see for example string you can see for example that there is uh, the format the same format method I showed you before, the, for example, yes, uh, I didn't find it in this moment, but here there is this full list of, uh, so for example, here it gives you the digits of a string, you can put a string lowercase, uppercase, and a lot of utility function to work with strings that by charm should also suggest you when you press dot a string a variable or just written there dot capitalize put it capital letter uh, count a lot of function and methods to say okay this is uppercase or not that are applicable um, applicable to strings uh, then if you want you can also get some input from the user by using this uh, area this console here and you can say for example print uh, uh, how old are you and use the input function to get uh, the results and then maybe print uh, you are plus uh, age plus years old so we are asking to the user here how old are you <laughs> yes i know it's almost seven also for me. How old are you? And then it waits for an input from some information here, and then it just print this. So notice that I this I expect that this should be a number, hopefully, uh, typically at least. But we don't convert it from string to number to number to string. And this is a string, and this is a string, and we cannot. Uh, perform an addition among a string between a string and a number we already see this so this is this work because input gives everything that comes from that that console as a string so if you want a number you have to convert the results in a number so for example int of input to so this convert whatever it's here try to convert whatever is given here in a number and then obviously this line doesn't work in that case but maybe you are asking the age of a person to perform some computation on the uh, number of, of age so if we run this 
it prints the, the python prints how old are you and you can type your age press enter and it say you are without space because i forgot the space here 34 years old for example so it give it accept an input something from you and then allow you to use this in your program you can also have, can have the a more compact version of this that is functionally equivalent that is just to put the question the request for information if any inside the input function so this will print the same things as before so if we run this it asks how old are you you can answer and it prints the same exact line as before the only difference if you have noticed is that in the previous case how old are you was in a line and the number was in the next line instead now they are all in the same line good i think that we can do the last topic and then we can stop briefly so uh, uh, that's two things first thing is uh, no let's do only this so let me create another file that I called list uh, dict and uh, So right now we have seen numbers, strings, booleans, and basically stop. Because charter, we don't have charter. So there are other two types of elements that are by default in Python that are list and dictionaries. List, let me do this list. Throw it. List are is a data type a data structure to store multiple items two three four one thousand in sequence and lists are accessed by sequ in sequence so apple in the first list is the element number zero orange is the element number one in the second list, one is the element number zero, two is the element number one. In the third list, change, one is not in the element number zero. Penis is the element number two, number one. Uh, two is the element number two, and dimes the element number three. So they are a, a data type to store items, strings, numbers, numbers as strings, whatever you want, mixing things up as you like in order and they are accessed the first element is number zero and so on and they are written with this square parenthesis and each element is separated by a comma so it's it's a list basically and they are called the list um, for a reason um, not array like in other programming language this is a list a dictionary as you may imagine, is another collection, another data structure to uh, 
collect elements elements also different type as you see here that are not in sequence in this case they are accessed as a couple so in this dictionary you have let's say three element in no particular order it's not that order written here it's just in no particular order the first element in this uh, version that i've wrote here is this couple here and six this is the entire element that are the legs of ants snake zero that are the legs that a snake has and uh, co four that is the legs that are co they are a couple of element and you also be after same things italy with its um, short code and germany with the same it's a couple italy and it are together the first element in a dictionary must always be a string you cannot have the first element as a number or as anything else just a string and is a key and is immutable in a dictionary so once you get a couple you cannot change the content of the key you can delete the key and its value you can create a new key a new couple key value but once you have a key you cannot replace that key and you have a key in this couple and its value the value instead can be changed as you in your at your pleasure and it could be a number a string uh, at least uh, another dictionary whatever you want but dictionary are just uh, a collection of items in no particular order that are accessed not by index not 0, 1, 2, but by key. So the first case you say fruit of zero, and if you say print fruit of zero, it prints apple in the, in the dictionary, you cannot say print legs of zero. You will say print legs of hand, print legs of cow, and no matter in which position they are in the data structure. Um, okay last two things i promise uh, there is uh, very quickly we can do this in slides uh, then i have uh, uh, so uh, we have we have seen the you've saw the we have seen the for loop in python there is also the while loop that is written basically in the same way, there is the keyword that is while, this is the condition, there is a new line with something here and indentation and where you want to go over, go out of the while, you just remove the indentation. The while loop, you have to uh, create the variable before the while loop as in other programming language and we already seen this. And I told you that in Python, you don't have the equivalent of four e equal to zero, e minor of 10 e plus plus but you have this that is roughly equivalent this say for number in a range of number that go between 0 and 5 print number so th so this is the equivalent to say 4 e equal 0 e minor 5 e plus plus it print 0 1 2 3 and 4 if you run this and if you want things a little bit more complex, you, can, you could say if number in a range that go from zero to 25, but not by step of one, by step of five. So it will print zero, five, 10, 15, 20, not 25, not the last value, just up to this. This is the equivalent of uh, um, the more, let's say traditional for loop in other programming languages so we can stop here about python just one news for you two news sorry the first one very quickly the first one is that on monday you will have 
we'll just have a look at the schedule here just to be on the same page literally on monday that is the 11th of march you will have a lecture he not here in the classroom uh, that is not here at uh, 2 p.m 2 30 p.m and then you will move to la dispe that is near the room number uh, 16 and to have a, for one hour and a half to have a first uh, let's say exercise about python about what we see today about python so nothing really particularly complex and uh, git that we will not uh, how to say it gently um, exp uh, explain to you in classroom but uh, this is uh, a, a reading for you to do before monday we can help you during the exercise we will not go over uh, the entire process of, of what is git uh, and so on and the reading uh, we just have three or four readings for the entire courses the reading is uh, split in two parts will always be split in two parts the first one are the required readings uh, a set of slides from this course a couple of years ago and a short video on youtube another short a little bit longer video on youtube a third video on youtube and a short tutorial on how to use uh, git in pycharm and then if you really like it you can also have some additional material that since they are additional is not required it's just something more where there is the same the video lecture of that slide in this course two years three years ago two years ago and some other videos online tutorial interactive tutorial about a free book about git so but the important thing is that you try to do all these i would say but i would say some of these by monday you can start for sure from the website and the, the, the slides and the video they are quite short and uh, in the in any case in the in the exercise the first part of the exercise is a step-by-step -step procedure of how to get uh, the, the exercise from git how to fork it on your uh, personal profile how to check out the the content on your computer or to get everything on your computer and start working on your computer all using it so this is step-by-step -step procedure in pycharm to do the exercise but it's important for the the course to have a look at that documentation is not an entire book just something quite quick to do it's not particularly difficult to, to understand so i will stop here and uh, have a good evening, night. If you have any question, I'm here.